Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'm bringing you guys a 12 team dynasty super flex mock draft from the 10th position as requested by one of my subscribers, Santos, down below in the comment section. So, before we get into it, this is a super flex dynasty mock draft PPR scoring. Now, the way I put it on Fantasy Pros is that it's two quarterback, pretty much two quarterback and super flex, so like the exact same thing. It's super flex, you pretty much want your quarterback as your super flex. You want to be starting two quarterbacks at all times. Super flex is quarterback, running back, wide receiver, or tight end. And then there's obviously the normal quarterback spot, but here we just put it as two quarterbacks. So it's like a two QB league, which is essentially the same thing. Two running backs, two wide outs, a tight end, two flexes, six bench spots. And then obviously this is just like the first 15 rounds of the draft. Obviously Dynasty League is like 30 rounds long, but I don't think you really need to go that deep in a mock draft. So we're just going to go 15 rounds deep here. I'm going to explain all my thought process between every single pick. So if you guys do end up enjoying this video, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. It is free. So let's get right into it. So at the 10th overall pick, likely the big players are not going to be there. The two big QBs are probably going to be gone in Lamar and Patrick Mahomes. So we are just going to go ahead here and not probably probably get either of those guys because they went at the 108 and at the 109. So looking at the draft board, Chris McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook, Ezekiel Elliott, Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, D-Hop, Lamar, and Pat Mahomes. So if I'm going to be honest with you guys, Pat Mahomes and Lamar Jackson typically go before the first five picks. In some drafts, they will fall all the way back here, but there's no way they typically make it into B pick number 10. Now, these wide receivers, there's a weird case because the mock drafts, the wide receiver like Michael Thomas may go in the first five picks, but then eventually the, in real drafts, people just wait because they're like, holy shit, I can't pull the trigger on a quarterback, and then they end up waiting. So the 106 te seems kind of typical. DeAndre Hopkins, very scared. Do not pick him at the 107. Not very scared because I think it's going to be fine, but wait till the second round. You got to get a quarterback or a running back typically in your first three picks in a super flex league. So to me, this is a very easy pick. Now, right here, if the quarterback I wanted wasn't available, if Kyler Murray wasn't here, I'd happily go with Dak Prescott. I think Dak Prescott eventually signs sometime this year and then as the quarterback for the long term. Kyler Murray, obviously, off of his rookie season, plays great. Now he comes back again. Now he didn't use his legs as much as I thought he would last season. I think he adds that more to the game. He obviously adds a wide receiver in DeAndre Hopkins to the uh, Arizona Cardinals offense, so I think that Kyler Murray is really going to tear it up this year, and I like him here as the quarterback three off the board in Dynasty League. So after we went with him, we're probably going to be looking to get one of those top tier running backs that I think could carry our team for now and for the future. So after we went with Kyler Murray, Derrick Henry came off the board followed by Chris Godwin, Odell Beckham Jr., and Tyreek Hill. So Derrick Henry going a bit early at the 111. I've seen him fall all the way into like the third round because he's on a one-year deal. He has that franchise tag. They sign him. They're like, oh, you know what? We'll use him for this year, and then we'll probably just end up he'll just go somewhere else. He'll get cut. And then Chris Godwin a little early for that. Odell way too early. I don't trust Odell, especially in the second round when he's more of a fourth round pick in Dynasty Leagues. I really like Odell I'll go ahead and draft him in the third round, but the 201 is very early for me, but this makes it easy for me. We're going to go ahead and get our favorite running back on the board here in Joe Mixon. Obviously, the Cincinnati Bengals are not the greatest team, but they get the first overall pick last year because they were the worst team, and they get Joe Burrow this year. Then their offensive line is better. Obviously, one of their offensive linemen that they drafted in 2019 as their first selection in the first fucking round. They draft him, and his ass gets hurt, so he's going to come back. The O-line's going to look better. If Joe Mixon was not available, I'd happily have taken Nick Chubb or Josh Jacobs in this spot or Austin Eckler as well. I think all three of those guys or four of those guys are going to be great for now and the future, but Joe Mixon to me is the clear pick here. So after we have Joe Mixon, I assume a lot of running backs are going to go off the board. Typically in these super flex drafts, wide receivers really fall. You can find some talented wide receivers in later rounds of the draft that you typically would not be able to find if you were doing a non-super flex league. But even in redraft leagues, you're seeing these wide receivers really fall because everyone's really on the running back early offensive type of strategy in these drafts, and that's what I try to do as well. So after I went mix in, Adams came off the board, followed by Josh Jacobs, Deshaun Watson, Julio Jones, Nick Chubb, Travis Kelsey, Aaron Jones, Amari Cooper, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, DJ Moore, Mike Evans, Dakota Prescott, George Kittle, Kenya Drake, Juju Smith-Schuster, Melvin Gordon, and CEH Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Very, very surprising that CEH fell to the 309. CEH is obviously a young running back. He's a rookie this year, so we don't really know what's going to happen. What I think is going to happen, he's going to get a lot of touches, and he should be good for the future. So I think he's obviously worth that third round pick. Typically, he goes in the second round, I have noticed. So currently, we are at the 310 at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 quarterbacks come off the board, 5e, 
third round where we're picking right now. Typically, you can see 10 to 12 quarterbacks go in the first three rounds, sometimes less if guys aren't as likely to pick quarterbacks early, but in most leagues, the quarterbacks come flying off the board. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and happily pick Josh Allen right here. If Allen was not available, I probably would just go with Joe Burrow for the future. Obviously, he's going to be good now, but he's going to be even better in the future. But Josh Allen, obviously, is one of those quarterbacks that there's going to be people, there's going to be naysayers of Josh Allen. They're going to say, oh, you know, Josh Allen, he's not really good at being accurate down the field. He kind of sucks at throwing it down the field. It doesn't matter. He has the rushing upside. He's going to rush you five to seven touchdowns. He's going to get you two, 300 rushing yards, which are better. The rushing yards are better because you only need to run fucking 10 yards to get one point. You have to pass 25 yards to get one point. And in most leagues that are four point per passing touchdowns, you get two extra points if he runs it in. It's beautiful. Josh Allen will be the starter for the next couple of years for the Buffalo Bills, and I think he should easily get a contract, especially if the Bills are on fire like I believe they will be this season. I think it's easy to see a road where Josh Allen is potentially a top five quarterback in fantasy football this season. So after we went with my man, Joshy Allen, Kenny Galladay came out the board followed by Miles Sanders, Jonathan Taylor, and Chris Carson. But now through three rounds, our team is Kyler Murray, Joe Mixon, and Josh Allen. So I typically try to attack the quarterback position early to make sure I get a good team, but I am going to be doing another Dynasty Superflex startup mock probably next week where I wait on quarterback and see if the team looks any different. So right now we're probably going to load up on running back yet again because I just love loading up on those running backs. Now right here it's easy. If Eckler is not here, I'm 100% going to pick Cam Akers. But since Austin Eckler is here, I'm going to pick him. Austin Eckler is falling for some reason. There's all these people thinking about, oh, he's not going to get as many touches. Oh, they're not going to dump off the ball as much with Tyrod Taylor, with Justin Herbert. Blah, 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 blah. That's all fucking bullshit. Austin Eckler is legitimately Christian McCaffrey light. He's like the diet version of Christian McCaffrey. He hasn't became that elite guy yet. It's very hard to become Christian McCaffrey. This guy is going to get 1,000 rushing yards, 1,000 receiving yards. He is going to slap the defense that's ever game for like 30 points. Austin Eckler won't do that because the Chargers, while they're a better team than the Panthers, he just won't get that much volume. But with that said, Austin Eckler is going to eat this season and for the future. I can see him potentially in the next couple of years being like Christian McCaffrey. Maybe not a thousand, but 900 of each category rushing and receiving. The guy's going to see a shit ton of targets. I really think he eats this year and I am not scared at all of Justin Jackson or Joshua Kelly for taking away his touches, which some people are definitely worried about. If Austin Eckler was not there. I would also think about picking a guy like DK Metcalf, Cortland Sutton, maybe a guy like Calvin Ridley would have been available there as well, who I really, really do like. Um, yeah, he would have been. So after we went with Austin Eckler, AJ Brown came out the board, followed by Leonard Fournette, Evan Ingram, Mark Andrews, Adam Thielen, Allen Robinson, Le'Veon Bell, Cooper Cup, Keenan Allen, Stefan Diggs, Baker Mayfield, Matt Ryan, Todd Gurley, Carson Wentz, David Johnson, DeAndre Swift, T.Y. Hilton, and Calvin Ridley. So now this makes our pick difficult because I would have wanted Calvin Ridley here, but I think we're going to go with a first wide receiver of this draft. Typically, you could go running back here, but I want to secure a wide receiver that I love for the future here with this pick. We are going to go ahead and select DK Metcalf here. Now, DK Metcalf burst onto the scene last year. He's that guy. He's shirtless in the picture. It, with Ole Miss, he's fucking huge, and people are like, oh, his three-cone drill fucking sucks, and he didn't look that. He's like, oh, maybe he just runs straight down the field. He can't do this. He can't do that. The motherfucker had 100 targets in his rookie season. 100 fucking targets. Imagine he catches 70 or 75 of those balls, how much better his season is. I think he has top 20 potential. If Lockett gets hurt again, he probably has top 10 potential. This Seattle offense, they're going to run the ball. I understand, but when Russell Wilson throws it, he's so accurate. He's going to hit Metcalf, and he's going to hit Lockett, and I love Metcalf for this season. I think he's great for the future of the guys a god damn beast and I'd be very disappointed had I not have drafted him here in the fifth round so now we are into the sixth round of the video if you guys have enjoyed thus far please click that subscribe button so after we went with DK Metcalf Breeze came off the board followed by Joe Burrow JK Dobbins and Maki Mark Ingram right now we have Kyle Allen I just conf I just literally put the two guys names together we have Kyler Murray and Josh Allen Joe Mixon Austin Eckler DK Metcalf typically I like to load up with a lot of running backs early so that's why we are doing this strategy now right here we are laid out with a pick that is very difficult for me. Cam Akers or David Montgomery. Do I want the unproven aspect in Cameron Akers? I've never really seen him do it in the NFL on an offense that I think could be better than the Bears, or do I want a guy who I know I feel is safe? I feel like David Montgomery is going to have a great career in the NFL last year. Sure, he only got 880-something yards. Sure, he wasn't that elite talent that many people thought he would be, but he's at a huge discount here. He was going like the third round of startups last year. Now we're in the sixth round 
three rounds fucking later, and he's here. I think I would have to go ahead and select David Montgomery here. I think he has a bounce back season. I think with Nick Foles at the helm instead of Mr. Kissing Titties Trubisky, the offense looks better. Nagy's going to take that fucking visor that he has and get it straight, shove it straight up his own ass and realize, oh, I'm dumb. I need to actually use the best player on my team in Dave. Now, maybe not the best player because obviously they have some talented wide receivers there, but I love David Montgomery here late in the draft. Not really late in the middle rounds, but late for where David Montgomery typically does go. After we went with David Montgomery, we may look to get yet another quarterback before they completely fall off the God damn earth. So looking at the board right now, we after we went with David Montgomery, Colton Sunk at the board, followed by Devin Singletary, Tua Tunga Vailoa, Tom Brady, Tyler Lockett, Devontae Paca, James Conner, Jerry Judy, Carry on Johnson, Zach Ertz, Jared Goff, Debo, Samuel, Raheem Mostert, DJ Chark, Robert Wood, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, Cam Makers. If you guys don't have Instagram or Twitter, find that fucking picture that James Conner posted. This guy is yoked. I don't know what he was doing. I don't even think that ma- that doesn't just make him a better pick, but the guy's absolutely yoked. Uh, I love... I love, I love Tom Brady in the sixth round. Tom Brady's going to be a top 10 quarterback, maybe top five this year for at least this year and probably next year as well in Tampa Bay. Cam Akers goes one pick before us, which is kind of disappointing. Robert Woods is a great late round pick I like as well. Same goes with DJ Chark, do 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 baby Chark. Now, this is not a tight end premium league, but if this is a tight end premium league, a million tight ends have already been taken. People value them very heavily. I typically just wait and select my guy Hayden Hurst and then go with Gasicki. We go bike to bike tight end strategy in those kind of leagues, but I am not taking a tight end early. But right now, through seven rounds, this is our seventh round pick. We have a bunch of running backs. We only have one wide receiver. We got no tight end and we have two quarterbacks. So here we're probably going to either go quarterback, running back, or wide receiver depending on what I see on the board right now. When looking at the board, we are faced with very, very, very difficult decision here. Do we want Danny Dimes who would be our quarterback three? Kareem Hunt who would be our running back one, two, three, four, or do we want our wide receiver two and Terry McLaurin? This is a very, very tough decision. Let me know who you guys would have went with down below in the comments. We already have our two good quarterbacks, so we're going to go ahead and wait, and we're going to go ahead and select a wide receiver, Ah, but the value is going to fall so far in running back, so I think we're going to have to go running back here and then hammer a bunch of wide receivers in a row, so we're going to go with Kareem Hunt here. Kareem Hunt, obviously, he's, he's a handcuff, but he's not really a handcuff. We saw in the last eight games last year, he was balling out of control. He was scoring more points in some of those games than Nick Chubb. If Chubb goes down, Kareem Hunt has shown in the past when he was on the Kansas City Chiefs, he's an RB1. He could be a fucking RB1 in Cleveland with Kevin Stefanski, who is a very, very, very heavy run coach. He loves to run the rock. Kareem Hunt will be running the rock. If Chubb gets hurt, if Chubb doesn't get hurt, he'll still be running the rock. This is a PPR league, so he's going to be catching a lot of dump offs out of the backfield. I love Kareem Hunt here as a very, very safe flex for the future. Sadly, Terry McLaurin went off the board after we made our selection. So after we went with Kareem Hunt, Darren Waller came at the board, followed by TMC, Terry McLaurin, Hunter Henry, and Maddie Snapback. Right now, I feel as though we are kind of in a position to go either wide receiver or quarterback, but I think we're going to go wide receiver here and then hammer one of these later quarterbacks, a guy like maybe Ryan Tannehill, a guy like maybe Drew Locke in the next round, or worst comes to worst, you go ahead, you draft Hashkins, then you hammer a few more quarterbacks later. So we're going to go ahead and select Tyler Boyd here, wide receiver out of Cincinnati. There is honestly going to be people that get pissed off about Tyler Boyd. There's going to be people saying, oh my god, he, he AJ Green might come back and that's going to fuck him right in the ass. He's going to get bent over. They're not going to use any lube on him. Bada bing, bada boom. He's fucked. That's what people are going to think, but no, 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 no. He's actually better. Better when A.J. Green is on the field. He puts up more points when A.J. Green is on the field, but even if A.J. Green is there or not, it doesn't fucking matter. Tyler Tyler Boyd is going to have a great season. He put up numbers last year with Ryan fucking Finley as the quarterback as well as Andy Dalton. Now they get horsecock Joe Burrow. They also get an O-line that is improved. That's why I like Mixon. I also don't mind drafting Tyler Boyd here. He is a wide receiver coming off as wide receiver number 28 on Fantasy Pros, and he's a guy that to me is a lock to be a wide receiver to this season easily over a thousand yards could potentially hit even 10 touchdowns if the team looks as good as I think they will and I think we made the right decision here by taking a running back before because the running backs are just flying off the board and the value right now is as garbage as gets so after we went with Tyler Boyd Danny Dimes count the board followed by Kirk Cousins Javis Landry Sony Michelle Marlon Mack Darius Geis Austin Hooper TJ Hawkinson Mike Williams AJ Green do not draft him don't draft AJ Green that guy legitimately loves being a bitch he loves getting hurt he has legitimately gotten hurt in the last four seasons. He has played less 
than half of his games. Less than half of his fucking games, he has been hurt. I don't understand why people like him do not draft him. After AJ Green goes Keyshawn Vaughn, Jimmy Gua, Big Ben, Roethlisberger, Ryan Tannehill, Phillip Rivers, Darrell Henderson, Phillip Lindsay, and Jalen Rieger. Another shout out to a guy who I'm I'm kind of moving up on, but I'm still in Dynasty. There's just no fucking shot I'm drafting this guy. Darius Geis, like, come on, man. The guy's a beast when he's healthy, but the guy can't stay healthy worth anything. Shout out to Sony Michelle. Nice value in the eighth round, honestly. He's a guy who I could see potentially rushing over a thousand yards if his knee arthritis does not really act up. Danny Dimes is a quarterback. I love late round. Same goes with Kirk Cousins. I think Kirk Cousins has a great season with the Vikings. Danny Dimes, obviously, he fi- if he figures out how to stop fumbling the goddamn ball, and the Giants will look better, I think he will have a great season. Now, right here, we are through. We are at our ninth round pick, and then we have a pick yet again here at the tenth pick, just a few picks away. I like picking in the back of the draft because I honestly like picking on the turn picks. Now, obviously, when you're in a real draft, you can trade up, you can move around, move all around, do whatever you want. I suggest moving back and acquiring these mid round picks because of how valuable they are but with that said right here we're probably going to draft either a quarterback or just start hammering on some wide receivers so looking still on the board Drew Locke is still here Justin Herbert Teddy Bridgewater Gardner Minshew I'm going to take the prayer that one of them falls back to us and we're going to draft another wide receiver here unless the running back value is still here but I think we're going to have to go wide receiver here I really like Rojo, but we already have four running backs. I feel like we're safe to just draft more of a, a kind of an iffy pick in the next couple of rounds at running backs. So we're going to go ahead and select one of my favorite late-round wide receivers that I think has the chance to bust, but at the end of the day, I'm going to risk getting busted all over like my name was Lana Rhodes, and we're going to go with Hollywood Brown here. This man gets the name Hollywood. I have no reason. I honestly don't know why, because he plays in Baltimore, but who gives a fuck? Because this guy's a goddamn beast. He runs down the field like Lightning McQueen drives in the Piston Cup. He's fast as fuck. Marquise Brown is going to get the opportunity this year to be the wide receiver one again on the Baltimore Ravens. Now, technically to me, the wide receiver one in the Baltimore Ravens is Mark Andrews, but Marquise Brown will be getting more looks this year. I love Antonio Brown's cousin, Hollywood Brown. And actually down below in the comments, would you draft a Antonio Brown, his cousin, in a dynasty league? Let me know. Where do you take him? Because he, if he plays, he's a wide receiver one. But is he ever going to get back into the NFL? Is it worth the risk? How do you figure that out? So right now, to me, it is an easy pick. We're going to go ahead and select my man, Justin Herbert, at the quarterback position. But looking at the board real quick, Will Fuller, Drew Locke, Tony Pollard, Sam Darnold. I would have loved Drew Locke. I really think that the Denver Broncos are building around Drew Locke. They didn't draft another quarterback. They drafted Drew Locke last season in the second round. They believe in him. They have a bunch of great wide receivers around him. I love that pick late. But right now, we're going to go with an even younger quarterback in Justin. Herbert the pervert now Justin Herbert's gonna be my quarterback three which is great if he's your quarterback two you're pretty much fucked because he's not gonna play for a bunch of games into the season I think he plays uh, maybe eight weeks in but with that said Justin Herbert's gonna be the quarterback for the future he'd probably get at least a year or two to play he was drafted inside the top fucking 10 picks he was drafted pick six <laughs> pretty pick six pretty ironic for Justin Herbert who a lot many believe is going to be a bust but with that said the value late is amazing he has the potential to be a beast and a perennial starter in the NFL so I'm gonna go ahead and select Justin Herbert here I think that's a solid quarterback three move especially with two guys in front of him who I really believe in that are very young in Kyler Murray and Joshua Allen so now we have to wait a while before we pick again that's kind of the plus with going towards the the uh turn of the draft is you get to wait a while you get to you know go drink a beer go fucking get some snacks or something if you're in a redraft league but typically dynasty leagues are the slow draft which i actually enjoy as well so after we went with justin herbert justin jefferson can't the board followed by damian williams james white mr old man jordan howard teddy bridgewater jordan howard's not even that old it's just the guy has fucking he's legitimately like a, one of those statues you see in greece that's how his hands work he has statue hands teddy bridgewater julian edelman brandon cooks matthew Breida, Devonte freeman Tariq cohen cam newton garter Minshew, john brown christian kirk Derek carr aj Dillon, rojo Henry Ruggs. I think it's very disrespectful by the computer for not drafting Gardner Minshew ahead of Cam Newton. Gardner Minshew might lose his job next year because Trevor Lawrence comes in, but he's going to have at least one more year of production being the quarterback one there, and I think he could honestly ball out, but the problem is that defense is so shit, but they're going to be throwing a lot in that case. So now looking at our roster, we got Kyler Murray, Josh Allen, Joe Mixon, Austin Eckler, DK Metcalf, Tyler Boyd, David Montgomery, Kareem Hunt, Marquise Brown, and Justin Herbert. So we're going to go ahead and select probably another 
Taylor running back here. To me, it's an easy pick. Alexander Madison's a lock in like the 9th, 10th, or 11th round. I don't care. If you have Dalvin Cook, you have to pick him. But this guy, if Dalvin Cook goes down, will have, be, have a top 10 potential for those weeks. He just will. He's a beast. They're a run-heavy offense. And I think that he's an easy lock to be picking here late in your fantasy football draft. So after with Alexander Madison, Tevin Coleman can the board, followed by Dwayne, Trash Can, Hashkins, uh, Zach Moss, as well as Marvin Jones, another wide receiver who I love super late in drafts. Zach Moss is a guy who could potentially take the job from Devin Singletary and be the head honcho back in Buffalo. Do I think that'll happen this year? I don't know. I think it's going to be more of a split. So it could be a safe pick late to have a guy that's going to score you maybe six, seven PPR points every single week, guaranteed, but I'd rather just throw in some random ass wide receiver than Zach Moss as my second flex if I'm being honest with you. Looking at the board here, I see a very obvious pick for me right here, and that's Nikhil Harry. Nikhil Harry, to me, is going to have his season. Last year, before the season even started in in preseason, the guy ended up getting hurt. I understand Tom Brady's not there, but Bill Belichick will use his Bill Belichick magic to swindle Nikhil Harry to being good. They drafted Nikhil Harry in the first fucking round. When does Bill Belichick draft a fucking wide receiver in the first round? Normally, he just goes to lacrosse practice and finds some random-ass kid to play fucking wide receiver for the Patriots like Chris Hogan, no, this is Nikhil Harry. This motherfucker was drafted in the first round. This motherfucker would have been great last year with Tom Brady, but he ended up getting hurt before the season. I don't care if it's Jared Stidham, if it's... I don't even give a... It could be me at quarterback, and I believe Nikhil Harry will have a great... Maybe not even a great season, but a great future value. I think he has talent, and I think he could easily slot in to one of my flex spots during the season after a couple of games, or maybe even at the beginning of the season, once Mr. Billy B dials him up some great plays. So now we're going to have to be looking towards the tight end position. We've waited so long. We got to eventually draft one, but there's so many still available on the board that I really like because a lot of these guys get r- severely buried by the ADP. So I'm going to go ahead and put myself at the top of the screen now. So you guys have a better view at the bottom of the draft. So after we win the kill, Harry, no fan count the board, followed by Gronk, Antonio Gibson, Latavius Murray, Rashad Penny, Ryan Fitz, Magic, B. Cole, Hardman, Rock Armstead, Jameis Winston, Royce, Freeman, Justice Hill, Jamal Williams, Duke Johnson, Chase Edmonds, Boston Scott, Derrickton Evans, Sterling Shepard, and Damian Harris. Looking at the board right now, shout out to the guy who drafted famous Jameis Winston. I actually think that's a great pick. Not for this year, obviously, unless Drew Brees goes down, but for the future, I think he's going to be the Saints quarterback, and that's great value when you have Michael fucking Thomas to throw the ball to if you draft Gronk in the 12th round, you might as well just throw away the pick. Gronk is not worth that. He's drafted in the 12th round. He'll probably play less than 11 games. He hasn't played more than 11 games since like 2011. So I don't know why the hell people are believing in him. I'd much rather get one of these other late round tight ends here that are still available. I'd probably go with two, but since we're not doing the whole draft, obviously I'd just go with one here and then I'd probably go with one later. Here, it's between Hayden Hurst and Gasicki. I go back and forth every time, but I think I just like Hurst too much. I think Hurst is really going to have an amazing season in 2020 and for the future. The Atlanta Falcons acquire him for a second and a fifth round pick, I believe, in the NFL draft. They trade from the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens don't really use him because they have fucking Mark Andrews, but now they get Mr. Austin Hooper, but younger in Hayden Hurst. This guy's going to get 100 targets. He just is. Dirk Cutter legitimately jerks off to the tight end fucking depth chart. He's like, oh, I'm almost there, and then they trade for Hayden Hurst, and he blows his load all over the screen. I love Hayden Hurst. I love Hayden Hurst. I legitimately genuinely think he has top five potential. There's a video coming out soon where I talk about this. Hayden Hurst is a wet dream for your fantasy football tight end. I love him late. I think you are honestly disregarding your team if you don't take Hayden Hurst late because of how talented the guy is. Now, looking back at our team, we have Hayden Hurst now. So after that was Naheem Hines, Lynn Bowden, Dallas Godert, Adrian Peterson, and now it is our pick. So this guy just fell way too far in the draft. I mean, it's pretty, pretty fucking obvious that he should have been picked already, and he probably would have been picked in your drafts already, but some people, they fall asleep. There's a lot of picks I like still, but we only have two bench spots left, so I'm probably going to talk about all of them with our next pick, but Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson is going to be amazing. Obviously, last year, he people are going to have the argument, oh, he only developed with the shitty Duck Hodges. He only developed with Mason Rudolph. He has no connection with Big Ben. Why worry about that? Why worry about that? He'll get in the offseason. It doesn't matter. You throw the ball to your best player. Dante Johnson and Juju are going to be doing a flippy floppy, flippy floppy for the slot. It doesn't matter. And Big Ben has legitimately had two good wide receivers that he could maintain in fantasy football for the last zillion years. He's done. He had A, B, and Juju. He had 
A.B. and Martavius Bryant, Mr. Stay Off the Weed. All right, Deontay Johnson can easily fucking do it this year. I really believe in him. He's going to fly up the draft board. He's probably going to go in, like, the eighth round of drafts because people are going to sip the Kool-Aid on him. Then he's not worth it in the eighth round. But right here in the 14th round, maybe in the 10th round, you pick him earlier. I love Deontay Johnson. I also love LaVishka Chenault, who is still on the board, as well as Preston Williams. So I'm going to talk about a bunch of picks here because this is where I would have wanted the draft to go with the next couple of picks. So looking at the draft board after we went with my main man, Deontay Johnson, Anthony McFarlane came off the board, followed by Alshon Jeffrey, Jordan Love, Justin Jackson, Carlos Hyde, Malcolm Brown, Lamar Miller, you know, Benjamin, Bo Scarborough, Curtis Samuel, Tyler Higby, Darwin Thompson, Josh Kelly, Jalen Samuels, Darius Slayton, I love, LaMichael P. Ryan, Sammy Watkins, and Benny Snell. So right now at our pick, if I'm being honest with you, there's so many guys I like for our team and for the future. At running back, right here, it's kind of just a crap show I, or a crap shoot. I'd probably go with a guy like Jarek McKinnon. I'd probably go with a guy like Gus Bus Edwards, Mike Boone, one of those type of guys. For wide receiver, there's so many. I still like Chenault, I love. I think that he is the wide receiver too for the future of the Jaguars. Preston Williams, potential wide receiver one in Miami. I talked about this in a video. Preston Williams was the guy Fitzmagic was targeting. Now, this will all turn to shit once Tua becomes the quarterback. It could be anyone, but I love Preston Williams. Another name I like later down here is a guy like Alan Lazard. Now, I think Alan Lazard is getting drafted way too high because, oh, he's the Green Bay guy. Last year, everyone talked up MVS, Geronimo Allison, but I still like him in Dynasty. He definitely has some solid value if he falls late enough. Other guys that I also like as well, John Ross could potentially be the wide receiver three on that team. J.J. Ortega, Whiteside. As well, that's how you say his name, Ortega Whiteside. I'm not actually a dumbass. Uh, some quarterbacks I like still, Foles I really like. I also like Mr. Where's He At. I like Jacob Eason. I think Eason honestly has the potential to be that starting quarterback come next season. Once Rivers is gone, I, you put him on your taxi squad. He's going to be great for the future. Right now, I have no idea. Foles, obviously, is a guy you can start probably this year. Another guy I also like a lot is actually Case Keenum. This guy is going to be a career backup. So if someone goes down, their starting quarterback goes down, you flip them Case Keenum for this piece, and you're feeling great. Jake Fromm also probably going to be a career backup, but if Allen was to go down, obviously you can handcuff Fromm and Allen together. Looking at tight end, if I was to draft another one, which I probably would, next round, Gasicki I like. I like Janu Smith. I also like Ian Thomas, Chris Herndon, and I like David Njoku. Not for this year, but for the future. Same thing goes with Jace Sternberger, who I think is a solid uh, tight end option here, especially when Rodgers is the quarterback for the the Green Bay Packers. So right here, we're going to go ahead and attack the running back position. Actually, we're going to go quarterback. We're going to get our QB4, and we're going to draft Mr. Big Dick Nicholas Foles. Nick Foles, if he plays, if he's the starting quarterback, the guy's going to play good. I just believe in him. I know he kind of has the curse where he's only good on fucking Philly, but at the end of the day, Philly Philly, Big Dick Nick, Super Bowl winner, Super Bowl MVP, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play. Not really, but one of the most fun quarterbacks to watch because his cock just dangles onto the field and he just absolutely balls out. It's so funny how literally they built shrines to him in Philadelphia. That's how good the guy is. I think he'll be fine. He's my QB4. There was a bunch of other picks as well that I talked about before that could have went as well. So we got an A- minus on Fantasy Pros. You don't have to care about your grade. It's all mumbo-jumbo. So our finishing roster, we got Kyler Murray, Josh Allen. We got Joe Mixon, Austin Eckler, DK Metcalf, Tyler Boyd, Hayden Hurst, David Montgomery, Kareem Hunt, and our bench is Hollywood Brown, Justin Herbert, Alexander Madison, Nikhil Harry, Deontay Johnson, and Nick Foles. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below or on your screen right now. Check on the video that's on my screen right now, right on top of me. And then one, there's going to be two videos to my left. So make sure you guys have a great rest of your day. I love each and every single one of you guys. I'll see you guys with some more Dynasty content in the future, but we're going to see some redraft videos for the next couple of days. I love you all. Have a great rest of your guys' day. As always, goodbye.